Okay, so welcome to my talk about improving the quality of KDE Plasma with the help of Valent, this new windowing system which you can see in action here. Our motto at KDE is a little bit, Valent will fix it. If we have a problem, we know Valent will fix it. Multiscreen, Valent, Valent will fix it. Brexit, Valent will fix it. World Peace, Valent will fix it. So, if there's a problem, we have a solution. Um, so, short about me, I'm Martin Kresslin. My email address is mkresslin at kde.org. I'm working for Blue Systems and am I, I'm sponsored for working on Quinn, KDE's Plasma window manager, and especially on the Valent port. A little bit about Plasma. Plasma is KDE's desktop environment. KDE is not a desktop environment, KDE is a community, and Plasma is the desktop environment of that community produces. We are currently at version 5.6.5, and um, our about to release 5.7, which I've heard will be the default desktop environment in the next OpenSUSE Leap release. We're currently at a three months release schedule. We used to be at six months, now we are at three months. So um, every three months there's a new release. You can find us on hash plasma on IRC or on our mailing list. And yeah, it's an X11 windowing system, but it's currently in the process of getting ported to Valent. It's actually working quite well already. So a little bit about what I want to talk about in this presentation. First of all, I want to talk a little bit about our quality process in KDE in general and also in Plasma. Then I want to talk a little bit about the problems of testing X11 testing X11 if you don't have OpenQA. I think OpenQA makes everything much, much easier. Um, especially I want to talk about um, my area of work, how to test on Window Manager. And then I want to talk a little bit about how Valent changed the world, uh, how we can test in Plasma, how we can test our Window Manager, how we can test our desktop shell. And then a little bit about the future plans, how we plan to extend all that what we've already implemented. So let's start with our quality assurance process. Um, first of all, I'm taking a look at frameworks. Frameworks are the successor of the monolithic KDE Ellipse in KDE four times. It's nowadays 70 independent libraries built up on, on Qt. We have separated them in multiple tires with different uh, dependency rules. So we have uh, Tire 1, which is only depending on Qt. Then we have a Tire 2, which depends on Qt and Tire 1 frameworks. And Tire 3, which can depend also on other Tire 3 frameworks. But of course, no circular dependencies are allowed. Um, we are at a monthly release cycle, as a monthly feature release cycle, with no dedicated bug fix releases. And currently, we are at, a, at release 5.23 which means at a monthly release cycle, we are doing that now for two years. Now, from a quality point of view, this has quite some impli implications. We are in constant feature release cycle, which means we cannot have bugs. We are not allowed to introduce a bug in a framework that just doesn't work. Uh, it also means we cannot tolerate half-baked features. It's not like, oh, I want to get that in, but it's not working yet. No, you cannot do that. It has to wait till it's ready. We can only integrate fully functional working code into frameworks. And by reducing the development cycle to one month, we took away the pressure to try to get something into a release. Because if you don't make it, the next release is just a month. Previously, with the six, six month cycle, it meant, oh, if I don't get it in now, then it won't go into this KDE release, which is then picked by the distributions. So if I'm missing half a year, it means sometimes one to 1.5 years till it gets to the user. And that was a huge problem. And of course, we have policies in place for frameworks. We have the policy that our code must have auto tests. It must maintain binary compatibility. If you've ever looked for rules of binary compatibility of C++, I've heard that KDE has the most um, comprehensive list of what is allowed and what not, because KDE libraries do not only work on Linux, 
and provide binary compatibility for Linux. They also provide binary compatibility on Windows, so for the Microsoft, Microsoft Visual Studio compiler and OS X. Um, of course, our commits are peer-reviewed, and if our CI system has a failure, it must be treated as a stop-the-line event. So, till the fix is, uh, till the failure is fixed, no other commit may go into the framework. Um, now a little bit about the code review process in KDE. Uh, first of all, I have to say that every KDE contributor is allowed to commit to any repository of KDE without prior code review. Everybody has commit access to everything. This means we cannot ensure on a technical level that we do um, code review. It means we can only have a social contract and that's mostly kept. Um, sometimes it happens that people commit without review then, but then they have to expect that they are shouted at. Um, the main um, website for code review is currently still ReviewBot at gitreviewbotkde.org that got originally introduced by Plasma, then pretty quickly picked up by all other projects. It's used what uh, Frameworks is using for code review. We have also an old instance from the SVN times, but we are also currently migrating to Fabricator. Plasma, again, an early adopter, is already using Fabricator, and uh, it's looking really good. Um, I'm used to both now. Fabricator looks a little bit nicer, seems to have a little bit better integration with the overall workflow, so um, that's a good thing. We also evaluated Garrett, and the developers were not so happy with it. Um, but we are also used to Garrett because Qt uses Garrett, and most KDE developers are also Qt developers, so that's also quite common to use. Then once we have our commit peer-reviewed, it gets committed, and then it goes to our Jenkins instance. There we have a build job for every master and stable branch of every repository, which is quite a lot. And whenever there is a commit, then run is triggered, which checks the build, which runs the auto tests, which are in the repository. Then if something does not work as expected, it reports back in annoying ways, which can be IRC messages, um, it can be email, um, RSS feed, whatever. So I think you all know Jenkins and um, so, yeah. And what's very nice, we have multiple profiles in the build system so we can say, okay, I want to compile this project twice with different compile flags so that you can also cover that. Currently, we perform the following checks. We compile on Linux. We do not yet compile on Android, and we have currently, after the run last sprint, which we had last week, more platforms in preparation, so I've heard that Android should be added. Um, there's talk about Windows. Of course, not everything will work on Windows, so uh, Quinn will never be compiled on Windows, but that's fine. Um, we have um, the auto tests run. We get a summary of the compiler warnings. We have ASAN features, which um, check for heap use after free detection. Um, so if we access uh, memory which already got deleted during an auto test, it will just abort and um, we have a nice build error, uh, not a build error, a test error. We get code coverage and uh, for the projects which use upstream, there's also some um, tests performed. I think there are for some projects a few more things which are performed, but as I don't use that, I don't really see that. Then in addition, brand new, we also have a continuous delivery system, that's Neon. Uh, so it does lots of the things that built KDE.org already does, but it also produces packages and builds a daily ISO. And with that, we can do actually test an integrated thing for a change, which is not just the code you randomly have on your system, but you can actually test. Similar to that is now what OpenSUSE offers with Argon and Krypton that goes in the same direction. 
but um, yeah, Neon as a KDE project directly. So a little bit a different target. So now let's talk about testing X11. So my experience from working with Xcode for quite some time is that you cannot mock, uh, mock X11. If you want to have a unit test which accesses X and you want to mock X, it's just not possible. There are projects which have done it, um, but my experience is it's too large. So the X specification is something like 160 pages. In addition, you have extensions, extensions ex um, which replace core functionality, extensions which ex replace extensions, extensions which replace the previous version of the same extensions. So that's a lot. Then we have on top of that the ICCCM with another 60 pages of describing how an X window manager and the communication should work. We have the extended window manager hand. And on top of that, we have actually two libraries to mock, XCB and XLib. So um, mocking that is really, really difficult. In addition, we have dependencies which pull in our uh, X without us even noticing, especially back in the KDE4 times, we had Qt which just linked X. Uh, we have KVindow system which linked X. We have OpenGL which is defined to link X on Linux. And of course, any library using any of them. So um, somehow you always get X in, somehow you will always miss to mock something and yeah. so. My experience was when I always, when I looked at it, mocking is not possible. We have to perform integration testing if we want to uh, get anything tested. So the normal um, integration test setup for X11 looks like that you run your X virtual frame buffer. On top of that, you run OpenBox as a window manager, and then you use the X test extension to um, simulate input devices. Um, the problem with that is that X virtual frame buffer is rather limited and way too restrictive. Uh, restricted. The same for X test. With X test, I can simulate mouse clicks and key presses. I cannot simulate things like smooth crawling, um, touch events, um, etc. So X test is somewhere on the level from 10, 15 years ago the more modern things were never added. With XFVB, the biggest problem I noticed was the complete lack of GLX. So I couldn't run OpenGL in a sensible way on top of it, and XRender was missing. So in the latest version of XRender, we have, uh, in the latest version of XVFB, we finally have XRender. So that finally got fixed but it's still really, really limited and not usable for proper testing because it can only do one resolution. We cannot simulate the removal or adding of screens. We don't get a physical size, so anything which wants to calculate a DPI just won't work. We don't even have a refresh size. What did I write there? A refresh rate. Um, so it reports a refresh rate of zero hertz, which is also far from the reality. So I was surprised when I saw that it's just X render. When I then looked at it, I was disappointed again. So um, why is simulating multi-screen so important? Um, the big problem with the X render extension is it's not atomic. You get changes in a non-atomic way. So for example, you get a render event when you plug in a new screen then you have a daemon reacting on that because it wants to set a proper resolution and the proper layout, and you get more render event. And um, whenever you act on a render event before you get the last one, you are operating on intermediate state, and the state you will produce will be wrong because the new ones are already queued. And that's a little bit of a problem, especially as we don't know when we will get the last render event. So uh, in Quinn, we introduced a way like, when we get the first render event, we start a timer with 100 milliseconds or something like that. And on every render event, we restart the timer. And we don't do anything till the timer fires. So 
at that point we know, okay, we got the last render event. And so Quinn never operates on an incorrect state. We either have the old state or the new one, but not the ones in between where we would do stupid things like removing screens and then your windows shrink or trying to render on an output which doesn't exist. Um, so that worked very well for Quinn over the last years. So we have hardly got um, bug reports about that this actually did not work. And of course, the, the time spent doesn't really matter because mostly the screens are mode setting and are black anyway, so you don't see anything on that. The mode setting takes much longer than our timer. So um, now I want to do a little excursus um, to Plasma 5 and the multi-screen problems. So you might have had the experience when you tried Plasma 5 that multi-screen didn't work. So how did that happen? What went wrong? After all, in Plasma 4, everything was fine. The main problem is that Qt introduced a new Q-screen API. And then they decided to bound a Q-screen to an X-render screen. And in addition, a Q-window, which represents a window and a screen, belongs to a Q-screen. And what then happened was a little bit unfortunate that if a Q-window loses its Q-screen, the platform window gets destroyed. So we had a situation where the intermediate state meant we have no screens. And now the platform window gets destroyed and recreated. Okay, that's nasty, but still okay. The windows just jump around. We also had um, situations where the platform window gets destroyed, and then we have a null pointer dereference, then the application crash. That's probably what most people saw, applications randomly crashing when you change the screens. That all happened inside Qt's code. It was never an error code, it was all inside Qt's code. Um, unfortunately for us, I still see crash reports with that. Um, they still come in with users of old Qt versions. Not OpenSUSE, but um, mostly I think um, Ubuntu is affected by that. And what I also learned, unfortunately, that when all platform windows gets destroyed, the app exits as all windows close. So the default behavior of Qt is if all windows close, the app exits. And that could be triggered by just removing all screens. And that even, um, caused a lock screen bypass by disabling all screens. That was something OpenSUSE actually found, an OpenSUSE uh, user reported. Um, you turn off all screens and the lock screen is uh, bypassed. Um, it's in Qt4 to Qt5 regression because in Qt4 we never had a situation that we don't have any screens. In Qt5 it could happen. So yeah, um, overall, the situation was very unfortunately because it could take the complete session down and we basically looked at it and had no chance to do anything about it because the problems were not in our code. KDE people went to Qt and fixed the code, but it took time till the new releases came out and the fixes got in. And um, also due to the crashes, we actually didn't see the, co uh, the, the bugs in our own code because they were covered um, by the crashes, like the lock screen bypass, it only happened after um, Qt fixed the crashes. Because before, um, the lock screen would just crash and restart. That was a condition we actually handled well. We just were not able to handle the situation that all screens go away and the application exits. So the current state is that with Qt 5.5, especially 5.5.1, um, most of the null pointer dereferences are fixed inside Qt. In addition, since Qt 5.6, a dummy Q screen is created if there are no X render outputs. So the situation that there is no screen no longer exists. But there are still a few problems. We still the, see that windows might get destroyed when an X render output is destroyed, and we still see that sometimes windows jump around because of that. And in my humble opinion, that's unfixable because it's uh, broken by design. A Q window should not be bound to an X render output. That's not how X works. On X, you always have a kind of screen, even if you don't have outputs. 
um, windows are bound to a position in the virtual screen and not bound to the position um, of an x vendor output. Yeah, and now back to the topic. Um, our experience over the years was that unit testing x vendor code is not possible. We wanted to do that for a long time, but um, actually it's not possible, and uh, it kind of relies on manual testing. So you would have to have an auto test, which says, and now please un unplug the screen, and that's not really feasible. Um, in addition, a problem are the different drivers. So over the last half year, I saw changes in driver behavior quite often. Like I did not change anything with my KDE or uh, Qt installation, restarted the system, and the behavior of how screens are handled by the Intel XORG driver changed. Changed in bad ways, like didn't come up at all. Um, if you go into DPMS power mode safe, it turns the screen off, which is interesting then with the crashes. And yeah, so that's something which you can hardly test. You, you need to have tests which also consider the behavior of the drivers. Um, we actually have a few tests which try to do something, like Quinn has a unit test which starts a Xavier server. Uh, with two outputs to at least test that we can handle the condition of two screens correctly. And yeah, and also for considering tests, um, there are still systems out there which don't have X render. So if you have something like um, VNC over X, you might not have um, X render at all. And you should also test that because. Um, People are not pleased if that doesn't work. So um, a little bit more about how testing X11 code looks like. So the code in KDE which interacts with X11 is really old. It's from the times where Coolio was still active in KDE. So it's <laughs> KDE1, KDE2, perhaps early KDE3. Um, so if you look at the code and then look at the changes and you see, okay, nobody touched that for 10 years. Um, <laughs> it's basically designed before concepts like unit testing or test-driven development um, were common or were even known. It's monolithic, it doesn't have units, um, it's not written with anything in mind, which would not be X11. Nobody thought about that there might be at some point Wayland. Um, but the code works. It's there for 10 years, it's not getting touched, it works. So it's kind of tested by the age. Um, but it brings us to the point, we, how can we actually test it? If we would want to unit test it, we would have to refactor the code, and that's, in my opinion, a very, very bad idea, because probably you're breaking more stuff by trying to refactor the code than you would gain by any tests. Um, integration testing might be an idea, if possible. OpenQA might be a very good idea for such old code, because you can then relatively easily um, test it. So, and on top of that, how to test an X11 window manager. So, this is now a little bit describing the situation of Quinn before we started the Valent effort. So, we had a very monolithic architecture. It didn't have any units. We had one huge class which did everything. It's best described by the anti-pattern called the God pattern. Um, it completely relied on Qt creating the X connection. Also, it relied on Qt creating windows, which also meant that it cannot manage its own windows. So, Quinn is not able to create a window and manage it. Um, so, if Quinn creates a window, you will notice that it doesn't have window decorations because it cannot do that. So when we went to Valent, we realized we need to refactor because we needed to get away from this monolithic architecture which is thought about X. And by refactoring it, we created units and those could be tested. So thanks to the refactoring we needed for Valent, we were finally able 
to um, unit test our code in areas. But um, how does it look like with integration testing? Integration testing in Windows Manager is even more difficult than integration testing in a normal X11 application because we can only have one Windows Manager on, a, on an X server. So we would have to replace the Windows Manager and then you, if you would run the test on a developer system, it would start to um, replace the normal Windows Manager, run the test and then be in a weird state because you cannot prepare the states, there are windows still around from the previous session, and then how to get back to the normal window manager. So it's only possible to test that in the context of XVFB, where we have the problems I just mentioned before. We don't have GLX, which we would really like to have. We don't have XRender, especially in the times uh, I'm talking about a few years back, where that just didn't have, uh, exist. So overall, we also want to have a clean state. If we want to test a window manager, we want to be able to say, okay, we currently don't have a window, now I create one, it should be positioned there, now I create the next one, it should be positioned there. So the, the, the clean state is really, really important, and that's really difficult to get if you try to do that in a test setup. So basically, we would have to start the XVFB from within, the test, and that's not possible with Qt's test architecture. So overall, I had made the experiences that we um, cannot use the Qt test framework for integration testing Quinn, but that would be, of course, the one we would want to use because that's what our developers are familiar with. So we had an idea evaluated in a bachelor thesis, which was to create a dedicated framework for Quinn, which would start the required XVFB, then would start um, Quinn on that XVFB, inject a test script through Quinn's JavaScript API, and then start helper applications to interact with, this, uh, with the window manager, and then to hit the conditions in the script. So the idea would be you create um, a window in the external process, set it to full screen, and your script um, verifies that a window got created and that it's put to full screen. But overall, we have never deployed that in production because it's too asynchronous, because we are now not only talking be between X and Quinn, but also between X, Quinn, and the helper application. And especially corner cases are not really testable with that. And also, when we had that framework evaluated, I started to see light at the end of the tunnel, how we can bet get better testing with the help of Valent. So the next thing I want to talk about is testing KWindow system. KWindow system is our implementation of the um, extended window manager hints. Interestingly, it does not depend on Qt's X11 connection. That's really important at that point because it made lots of things easier. It's also not depending on Qt per se, it's having an own implementation. And what's also made it much easier is that it doesn't perform any event processing by itself. So instead you pass it an X event, which was a property change or something like that, and then it processes it. And um, with the port to Qt5, we ported this framework from Xlib to XCB. Um, that was a huge change, and I thought, okay, um, we're going to do that change, which is the base of our window manager, and we don't have tests for it. No way, I'm going to write the test for that. Um, so I went there, there and wrote um, test cases. Actually, we did the port to XCB twice, one developer did it, I did it. I wrote the tests against my implementation, and then we swapped the implementation out and just used my, uh, my test cases. And what these tests do is what I have just described for how we would have wanted to have Quinn tested. It starts its own XVFB to have a uh, clean state and then runs its test. And these are very basic tests like creating a window, setting a property on it, and then verify that the property was set as we expected. Um, unfortunately, it still allows the test methods 
to leak information into the next test case. Um, that was, as I noticed, that our implementation did not support multiple X servers, so I could only connect to one X server at the time. Um, that's actually also changed because of Valent. So, and with that, I come to this topic. What did we change with Valent? Yeah, um, first of all, we are really unsatisfied with the testing capabilities of X. And now that we are going to the new thing, we want to, is to fix our testing. So we want to have proper multi-screen support, which can be tested. We want to have everything in a state that we can have unit test, um, that we can unit test it, and we want to have better integration test capabilities than XVFB plus OpenBox. It just, X didn't work for us. We have now the chance to, to do it properly, and we wanted to do that from the right and do the planning with all of that in mind. Um, for our Valent efforts, we created a new framework that's KValent. It's a tier one framework since 5.22, so it's the latest um, framework to have been added to it. So it was added last month, but it had a previous life in Plasma Workspace. Basically, it's a headless Valent server API. So it's an API which allows us to create a Valent server and implement the protocols in a C++-styled manner, in a Qt-styled manner to be precise, and also to have the, um, the contract described in the Valent protocols implemented. That's something like um, the Valent protocol specifies that if you pass keyboard focus to a surface, the previous uh, one should um, get a leaf event. And the, uh, the library takes care of that to have it easily for the user of um, the library to just update keyboard focus. Um, the user of this library is mostly Quinn, of course. So we went for an approach like we had on X11 that the actual implementation of the things which make out a valence server is done in a framework so that other implementations could exist on it. So if at some point we say, okay, Quinn is not doing it properly anymore, we can um, write a new valent server from scratch without having to rewrite everything. What's very interesting about kvalent is that it also has a client library. And the client library mostly exists only for testing purposes. And what we achieved is a very, very easy way to completely auto-test um, kvalent. We can easily create a valent server with exactly the things we want to have and then have a client connect to it and we can pretty much test every aspect of it. So at the current point in time, kvalent is a library which has about 10,000 lines of client-side code, 12,000 lines of server-side code, and about 11,000 lines of auto-test code. And we have currently a test coverage of about 87% and a conditional coverage of about 65%. The conditional coverage is so low because we have lots of asserts, especially in the client code, and those we don't test, obviously, because otherwise our test would fail if we would go into an assert in a test. So overall, that's looking really good if we compare that to the X11 world. And my experience lately is that if we have a bug, we are able to create a test case for it. So that's really good. And also what I'm seeing is if we have a bug, it's in the not yet tested code or not yet test covered code. So um, the first user of the Kvalent library was actually Kscreen and not Quinn. Because Kscreen started to port um, to, um, to Wayland and wanted to test properly. And it wanted to have a Wayland server which it can to connect to. Um, a way how to fake outputs like adding an output, removing an output. And what's really great about the tests in case screen for Valent is that it can load profiles as test data. So you can describe 
or actually you can export the profiles you currently have, like I have two screens with this resolution and this layout, you export it to test data and then you can tell us, um, hey, this one didn't work, it did not do what it should do and we can put that into our test data and verify that it works. And that also means that we can test the X11 code indirectly by it because the shared functionality is now being tested through the Valent code. And what we think we did was doing X render right. We tried to apply all the lessons we learned from X render. We applied changes atomically. We um, tried to get feedback to K-Screen whenever something changes. So um, if K-Screen requests the, the outputs to be changed, it sends a request to Quinn, Quinn applies it and then sends back to K-Screen uh, whether it worked or not. If it didn't work, it will revert to what was previously. So it's no longer the, we throw things at X render and see what sticks. So that's a huge improvement um, for K-Screen. So in Quinn, we also had a few changes due to the going to Wayland. We had a few of the testing blockers removed. We don't depend on Qt's X11 connection anymore. It's, it's now we're creating our own X11 connection and only on X11 we use the X11 connection provided by Qt um, if we run standalone on X11, so the normal old Quinn. Um, we need to be able to connect to multiple X servers. That's very important in the test, so in the developer workflow, because we want to have a nested Quinn. And this nested Quinn has to render to, to the normal X server. That's one X connection. And it has to have an X VLAN. That's a different X connection. So we actually had to remove the problem we had in the K window system library that NetWM only supported one X server. We had to remove that so that we can have Quinn probably running with multiple X servers. And of course, lots of the X11 specific code got refactored to be windowing system independent and those areas can now be tested. We, can, we have created unit tests for them on X11 and also for Wayland. In addition, we created um, some abstractions inside Quinn to have the rendering and the input handling platform specific. So we currently have a few um, specific, specific plugins for that. We have an X11 plugin which can be used for nested rendering or as a standalone. So also the normal Quinn on X11 nowadays loads the uh, plugin for the platform API abstraction. We have a valent rendering backend, which is also, again, just nested. We have for direct rendering management. We also have a frame buffer device, but that might get removed again. And we are able to run on Android's hardware composer with the help of Lepipras. In, um, yeah, that I just already mentioned. So, yeah, the, we were able to change the K window system and also adjusted all the auto tests so that every test method now gets its own X server that we don't have uh, information leaked into um, the next test. And what was really an important change was done somewhere October, November is last year is the introduction of a virtual platform plugin. This virtual platform plugin does not perform any rendering per se. It just renders into a QPainter um, uh, QPainter object or into uh, actually a Q image with the help of QPainter or into a virtual frame buffer on a virtual rendering um, device. And with that, we are able to run Quinn on a server which doesn't have a real screen. And if we are able to run it on a server, we are able to run it in um, our CI system. So that's what we actually did. We built up a test framework for Quinn, um, which we can use now in our auto tests. And this, 
um, test framework allows us to start the complete Quinn, including x uh, including the composite, the effects, everything we have, and um, just don't render to real hardware, render into virtual devices. And this uh, gives us the possibility to have a complete introspection into our window manager. And from there, we can now create X windows and valent windows, try to manage them, verify what we did, like um, did the strut on a panel get applied correctly? We can add multi-screen like we want. We can add screens, we can remove screens, and we can verify that inside Quinn that all um, works correctly. So that's a huge game changer for the development inside Quinn because that's something I have dreamed of for years, to be able to actually test whether Quinn uh, manages a window correctly. And that also showed already that if we got a crash reported, um, I was able to create test cases for that and fix it, and no, it will never happen again because now we have a test case. So overall, that means we are now able to do test-driven development inside Quinn. Um, I must say that Quinn had already a very good quality before. Uh, it's not that we didn't have any quality at all, so don't get that wrong, just because we were not able to do test-driven development. But overall, over the last few months, I've added something like 7,000 lines of test code. Um, the new input handling code, which we wrote for Valent, is completely under test coverage. This includes that we have all the lock screen situations completely tested. Um, so we actually know from our test cases that it's not possible that uh, input events go to a window um, if the screen is locked. Um, what's also nice about this new framework is that we can from there start Qt applications, which then use Qt Valen, and with that we can actually also auto-test Qt code. So if we see a big problem in Qt, we can re uh, create test cases for it inside our test framework and include that into our tests. Um, we currently, this has a few limitations because we cannot test our X11 only code, so everything which is in our X11 standalone plugin cannot be tested by that, which means we cannot test our X render compositor, which means we cannot test the GLX compositor, and um, creating X11 windows in the test case is a little bit cumbersome because we cannot use Qt for it. Um, Qt would load the platform plugin, which is not XCB in the case of Quinn on Valent. So that's a little bit unfortunate, but we have the network WM classes, which help us a little bit there. So in addition, brand new in the latest framework release, we have now a Valent virtual framework for test server. Um, we cannot start the kvalent based testing which I presented previously in um, all cases. So if you have a test which would depend on QGUI application or Q application being created, we have a dependency loop because it will try to connect to the valent server which you are about to start. So that cannot work and um, then we just run into a situation where the application freezes. I have gone, that, gone through that um, with my Quinn Valent porting because I were there in this situation, so I know that cannot work. And now with um, kvalent 5.23, we have a very, very small binary um, which can be integrated with CMake and CTest, and all it does is it starts um, the server through a CMake command, and then the server, once it has completely started itself, will start a test binary and then report back the result code of the test. Um, so what it supports is currently creating windows, um, faking input events. So it's on the level of XVFB, but we plan to extend that. Um, so with that, I come to what we want to do in the future. Um, first of all, I want to mention a problem which we have on our buildkde.org. Um, buildkde.org runs Docker's containers, and there we don't have a DRI device. 
and Quinn tries to do EGL initialize without a DRI device, and that fails horribly. And so we are forced to use um, the QPainter uh, compositor for um, our tests on buildkde.org, but we have actually a few tests which would need OpenGL, so those have um, a QSkip currently in the code to ensure that they don't crash on the CI system and don't um, shadow by showing warnings that um, tests fail. And what's a little bit a bigger problem is that we don't get any Qt Quick windows to show because Qt Quick terminates the application if it cannot create an OpenGL context. So we cannot start any Qt Quick applications from within Quinn's test framework, which means we cannot start Plasma to verify it. So that's um, a big problem. If anybody has ideas how we can get EGL initialized in Mesa work on, in a Docker container, please tell us because we are pretty much clueless. So what we want to do is extend our KVLand test server. Currently, there's only one test case so far which uses it, but we want to be able to verify everything we use in KVindows system. Also, we want to use it for our new task manager library, which we introduced in Plasma 5.7, um, and want to integrate that into further frameworks to have all the tests run twice. So we normally have tests which run on X11, and um, we can very easily, with this framework, also run them on Valent, and by that, just get a higher test coverage for the code and also for KValand. And also what I want to use it is test the hell out of the QtValent client library because it currently still has a few problems and these are, not, are annoying me. Also, we would like to build up a test framework for um, Plasma. So the idea is to take what we have for Quinn and make it usable for Plasma as well so that we can start Plasma, so the complete desktop session, in the context of Quinn's test framework and then have an IPC mechanism, mechanism to verify the internals um, of Quinn. Like um, Plasma creates a panel and we want to see whether the panel actually got created and has on window manager side, the um, positions we, ex, uh, we expect. So um, that's kind of going into the area what OpenQA is also doing. So maybe OpenQA will be the better choice. That is something we still have to evaluate, um, especially if we consider that we could take screenshot with it where we are getting an overlap. So um, that's probably something to look into um, what is the better choice here. And with that, I am at the end of my presentation. Um, I still have a few minutes for questions, so if you have any questions, please um, ask. doesn't work, apparently. Currently, in OpenSUSE, there's the equipment image with Valent support. What would we need to do to be able to test it with OpenQA, which basically means getting it to work in QEMU? Oh, good question. I don't know what would be needed to um, get it running. Um, so with the virtual backend, you probably would already get it running without any changes. With QEMU, you it probably depends on whether you have a GPU which is capable of, do, uh, of doing DRM in it. Not really. OpenQA, OpenSUSE or currently uses the Cirrus backend. So there is basically only a frame buffer. Okay, then you could use the frame buffer backend of Quinn, but then you don't have OpenGL, and then, yeah, well, Qt Quick won't be like that. Well, wasn't there the plan to support a software rendering backend in Qt 5.7? Sorry, I didn't uh, get it, it was too noisy. 
I think there was the idea to have a software rendering back end for Qt Quick 2 in Right. In uh in pl in Qt 5.7 there is never Qt Quick um software renderer. But that doesn't work for anything which actually expects OpenGL. So um code needs to be adjusted. Um yeah, that's will happen now that Qt 5.7 is out. I expect that KDE code will work on that. But yeah, if you want to actually test it in OpenQA, you would want to test the real thing, not just the software fallback, which is exactly the problem I, I have here with, um, with the EGL initialize failing. I, I don't want to test the software fallback. I want to test the OpenGL stack. No, you mentioned that you would want to drop the frame buffer back end in Quinn. Hmm? Would you still do that if it's the only way to get it to work in QEMU and possibly virtual box without hardware acceleration? Then that for that it's definitely a use case. If that's the only way, then we will keep the back end. I mean it's not a lot of code, it's something like one thousand lines of code. It's not really expensive to keep it. It's just um for me, there was a question, does it make sense if we have a DRM device, which can also be used for software rendering, even if we don't have OpenGL, does it make sense to have the framework for backend? If there are use cases for it, I'm, I'm all for keeping it. Okay, thanks. Do you have a question back there? So, uh, just a comment about uh, OpenQA and OpenGL and software rendering. <clears throat> Currently, we are using uh, LLVM pipe acceleration with MESA, and, and OpenQA is running us usually using the serious uh, software uh, rendering. So, it means that Qt and Kwin, Kwin could perfectly run using the OpenGL backend, and then we would run using the software uh, emulation of MESA, but at least you would test the OpenGL code of Qt. Only if we get to that point. So um, that's what we also tried to use LLVM pipe, and we didn't get to the point that MESA actually tried to use LLVM pipe. It fails before. It fails in the EGL initialize call. And at that point, we are not where it would decide to use LLVM pipe. And um, the same with, um, well, Qt code actually should work then. But yeah, we never got to the point that LLVM pipe would, uh, would even show up. It's, yeah. it's failing so, before. Yeah, I guess it says you need to, I mean, we might need to work on that because we are able to use that for the GNOME testing, and there is no reason why it wouldn't work for Qt. Looks like there are no more questions, so thank you for attending. <laughs>